Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the recent re-release of the AMT kit Klingon Bird of Prey in 1350 scale by round 2. It's kit number AMT664 and it has been rated as skill level 2 for ages 10 and up as it requires paint and glue. The kit contains about 70 parts molded in green, clear, and has pewter landing gear with water slide decals. The stand is black uh, with a steel rod. And some of the revisions in this version are wing baffles that allow you to pose the wings properly in your choice of three modes, either attack, cruise, or landed. The other major change here for this version was the landing gear based on the movie um, Star Trek III search for Spock. Originally it was unstable and has been replaced with a nice steel pole base. Also there's a great list of colors for you to help you with paint options and there's a lot of pictures on the internet available uh, for reference. The overall dimensions are approximately 14 inches wide, 10 inches long, and 5 inches tall in landed mode. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours, but as always use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Construction of your kit actually begins with the radiator baffles. You choose which mode that you want to display your model in and then use the corresponding correct baffles. Um, they're available in cruise, attack, or landed mode and each mode has its own set of radiator baffles to use. I'm going to be using the landed version uh, as seen at the end of Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock, and the beginning of Star Trek 4, The Voyage Home. So I'll be using the baffles for the landed mode. It appears that the directions are somewhat mixed up and have you reversing the baffles. Um, so use parts 44, 46, and 48 together and pair up parts 45, 47, and 49. Then paint these a steel color. Now we'll apply the decals to the radiators and they're generic for all three sets and need to be custom cut for each one. Apply the decal in place as you normally would starting at the bottom and lining up the decal as needed and use a fresh uh, number 11 hobby knife blade to cut the decal to fit the panel you are using for your build and then discard the rest of the decal. I also recommend using some setting solution to make sure that it adheres properly to the surface. Now assemble the lower wing cannons. Using the paint chart on the back of the instructions, paint the base color a pale green and then to detail the laser cannons, paint those gunmetal and the various panels as noted with the required colors. Then add decals one to each wing side. Now decide if you want to build your ship in flight mode or landed mode and discard the bottom panel that you don't need. Then install the panel that you have selected. Gather these parts and if you use the landed mode you'll also need the loading ramp and the doors for the bottom. The instructions have you attaching the landing gear door improperly for the open position. They use two pins that have you attach the doors flat against the body this isn't right. The doors would actually open in a hydraulic wing action not slide. Unfortunately due to the landing gear fitment you can't install the door at the proper angle without some major reconstruction and cutting of the doors. As you can see here I chose to come up with a compromise and have the doors open a little farther than normal um, but to uh, cut the doors 
it was a major uh, construction and not in the scope of this build so I just attached the doors with some super glue in a uh, partially open position after the ramp and door are attached and all the mold lines and pin marks are cleaned paint the unit a pale green and follow the instructions closely to match the paint scheme for the rest of the details there's a lot of panels and variations to fill in, so take your time and pay attention to those callouts. Gather these parts for the landing gear, and note that the uh, struts are made out of pewter metal, and they need to have a self-etching primer applied before you try to paint them. After they've dried, assemble the gear and the feet in place. You'll need to use super glue to assemble these parts. Use the base of the BOP to line up the feet properly and paint the gear and supports pale green. Install the landing gear in place and add the supports to the landing gear. Gather these parts to assemble the wings. Then assemble the main wings and add the two parts of the inner coolers to the wing. Do both wings and paint the wings a pale green. Again refer to the paint chart and detail both sides of the wings completely. Add the wing pylons and radiators to the wings and set these assemblies aside for later assembly. Now add the decals to the wings too. Now pull out the parts for the main body and it can be assembled in stages before it's painted. The hole panels are added to the upper hole and then the side panels are glued into place. Install the torpedo emitter housing into the bulkhead and then install the bulkhead. Assemble the shield generators and install those onto the hull. Then add the bussard scoops. Paint the finished body assembly pale green and follow the paint scheme for the detailing. Detail painting all the panels and parts for their proper colors will really highlight the details on the kit. Now put the halves together and assemble the lower hull to the upper hull. I use super glue here for strength. Paint the torpedo conduit pale green and the cloak generator insignia red. Then install the torpedo conduit on the lower hull in place on the neck. Now add the cloak generator, that's the red part in place, on the upper bulkhead and paint the circular feature steel. Use some super glue here for strength and install the wings to the hull. The wings are fully supported by just the radiators on this build. The engine and the torpedo emitter are made of clear vinyl so we're also going to use some clear um, paints for that so paint the framework on the emitter steel with the emitter ring and center painted in a clear red. The engine is also uh, painted with a clear red and a clear orange uh, the framework is steel and there's some flat white used on the uh, side walls too. Now use the paint guide for the exact locations of paint and install the um, engine and the emitter housing into the bulkhead with some clear part cement or white glue. The few parts that you'll have less left for this build are the unused parts for the landing gear doors and the radiators for the alternate wing configurations. The overall build is now complete, aside from the base, so you can stop here if you wish. Install the finished build on the base and have a nice new looking bird of prey. Or you can go the next step, as the review shows further, and do some weathering effects to bring out more detail and a more realistic look of a battle used ship. The following weather, weathering techniques are really optional and can be done to any degree that you feel that you'd like to allow. Overall the ship and the films are kind of uh, dirty. Looks like they've been battle tested. You can use some simple techniques to bring out the panel lines and details and add shadows to give it a better appearance. One way uh, is to use simple um, cheap acrylic based flat black craft paint and some water and give the whole unit a wash uh, with a light coat of it and then use a flat wide brush to touch the paint by not putting much at all on the bristles and just adding a little water and then uh, applying it to the body 
so that it seeps into the recesses. The next step is to use some dry brushing for some highlights. You'll use a shade uh, of color that's one or two times lighter than your base and then using a flat wide dry brush you just touch the end of the bristles into some paint and then dab off the excess leaving just a little residual paint then you lightly wisp it over the tops of the parts you want to highlight and the edges only and this will make the parts kind of stand out from the wash that you had just added now in this last step we'll add some rust to the uh, vehicle so you can use any thinned paint but um, there's also some stuff out on the market that's just for rust effects like the stuff from uh, AK Interactive and it just has uh, different shades of rust so it makes the job easier and the consistency is better but nonetheless uh, you use a fine tip paintbrush with very little paint and just run the paint along the panel lines and note less is more uh, consider where the parts would naturally rub or rust and then add paint to one area at a time let it dry and rub it off uh, softly with a tissue and kind of mute the look a bit and you can also find other products like this at online hobby stores in order to more closely replicate uh, the scene from the movie Star Trek Voyage Home where the bird of prey was landed on Vulcan uh, and where the Enterprise crew had uh, returned Spock, I used uh, a red paint and hand painted HMS Bounty on the side of my ship just like the one in the movie. The last step in construction is to add the stand. Uh, the stand is a dome and a metal rod uh, and a swivel or straight mount. Now I used the straight mount and installed the Bird of Prey on the stand. Well, there you have it. This kit with a little extra detailing and weathering uh, looks absolutely grand on your display shelf. Now AMT has uh, released this a couple times in the past so it's a repop but it has had some options added to it. The build itself um, is, is a good one. There are parts fit together uh, unlike some of the earlier editions of this kit but the instructions have a few errors and the uh, assembly process has a couple of uh, issues you know for the landing gear door but other than that it's a, a pretty good rendition of the bird of prey uh, at a very good price point now it's not a hundred percent accurate uh, but it's a real close representation and looks great built now with the uh, wings having the options of being landed cruiser attack modes it's a really nice addition and the optional landing gear or flight mode mold uh, choice is, is a good one to have now the painting isn't as difficult as it looks uh, and the instructions even though they're kind of cluttered with the paint scheme call outs uh, really give you a good idea of how to finish the model. The decals are basic but they look good too and you just finish the whole thing up with a dull coat uh, of clear, clear paint after you're done. Uh, now this um, model appears to be fairly correct for scale uh, with the size ratios being about right and this kit is a fun build but it still holds up uh, great after all the re-releases with almost no flash and the ejector pin marks are on the inside so they don't show so I think you're gonna have a great time with this kit we hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com Thanks.